Let's have a look at the Peony clutch bag. Place two pieces of batting on top of our stabilized hoop. In the hoop, we've got either a cutaway or a tearaway stabilizer. I'd probably use cutaway in this instance. Now we've done the outline of the shape, so we're going to cut the batting away. Cut them single layers at a time, you get a better cut than uh, trying to cut them both together. You get a much better cut. It's a more, what they call a feathered cut if you actually cut them singly. Now place our top fabric, which in this case we've got a, a PU, on top of our hoop, just baste it to our hoop. And then we've got the outline of the flap and our design is being placed down with our first colour. Just straight stitches and back stitches to create this trapunto effect. The double batting is what gives the trapunto the, the loft, the, so you get your highs and lows to actually get your pattern. Getting the recipe right for thread, needle, foot height, and because we're using double batting there, sometimes it takes a little bit of fiddling. Um, you need to uh, make sure that your top uh, thread tension is, is a little bit lighter than, than heavier, so as you don't get any skip stitches, and making sure that the thread is coming off the reel without any interference. Right, let's cut a lining. So we've got our lining, which is, um, in this case, is going to be, a, we're using one of our rulers. So it's a six by 10 hoop. So we've got um, um, eight by 12 as being our cut, finished cut. And we're going to actually spray baste the fabric to the cutaway stabilizer. So spray half, place, spray half, place. We're going to lay this on top of our, our flap so as it's right sides together, so wrong side up. Then we have our flap ready to come out of the hoop and be trimmed up. So we want to leave half an inch at the top. And then the rest of our scenes will be quarter of an inch for the time being until we do some snipping and trimming. Right, so let's just clip into our curves. Well, we're going to re remove the, the point. Clip into our curves. You can clip more if you wish. And reduce any of the bulk around those tight curves. Turn through, push our edges out, and we just poke the edges out and run your the edge around seam here. So this turner has got a little little ball, like a ball, not a ball bearing, but it's like a little ball on the end of it, and it's actually an embossing tool, and um, it works very, very well for pushing out PU edges. Inch and a half up and evenly in the middle, let's mark a mark. You should be following your notes while you're watching this video as well. It's very helpful. And that's where our part of our magnetic clasp is going to go. So we need to centralize it and mark our two prongs. And then we're going to, with our seam ripper, just mark, make a little hole for the prongs to go through our stabilized lining. So out of the set, this is the outy, so it's got the little, the little nodule on it. Pop our washer on, and you either push in or push out, whichever you desire. 
Okay, so there is our magnetic clasp. With a bit of spray base, just spray inside the cavity. And once you're happy with the edges and the placement, flip it over to the fabric side and give it a little press. Right, there's our flap. So again, another um, piece of, so this is going to be um, tear away in the hoop, and we're going to place one piece of batting onto our hoop. Trim our edges of our batting back to two mils around the outside the perimeter edge. There we have a placement line. And what we want to do is we want to do a flip and fold for the top of this edge. So we see that we can see our placement line on the back and on the front. So with our front fabric, so this is where the flap will sit onto, we want to place the edge of this front fabric a quarter of an inch over our placement stitching, which we've just stitched, and then stitch this into position. Okay, so that's going to fold onto the hoop once we get there. And then we turn to the back using the same line. We're going to place a piece of lining right side down. So it's wrong side up, right side down. Tape it into position. Put it back into the machine and re stitch that line. Roll this up and just secure it along the outside edge so it doesn't get in the way of any, anything, doesn't get caught up. Pop it back into the machine and re stitch that line. So there we have our front and back of our, the front of our clutch. So remove our tape, fold across. Fold it quite firmly because we want that top edge to be quite firm. You can tape that if you wished. Make sure there's no pleat where you end. We're going to do a little X in the middle and that is going to be where our other side of our magnetic closure is going to go. Line it up so as it's in position. The X is in the middle hole of that washer. Mark your two cut lines. And then with a seam ripper or quick unpick, just, just be careful. Go through and just make a cut for our prongs of the other side of our, of our magnetic clasp. There you can see the two prongs go through. Flip it over. Pop the washer on into place. And either push those wings into the center or push them out to the sides. It does not matter which. So that's our plate, that's our, uh, our clasp done. We've done the calculations for you. So undo that lining, flip it over. So this is the true flip and fold. Tape it into position so it doesn't move. And then put it back into the machine and stitch it again so as that is all sandwiched together. So we have our top fabric, our batting, our clasp, and our lining. So that top edge on the right hand side, when the tearaway is pulled away from that, it's a finished seam. That will be the top envelope going into the bag. Right, let's do a placement line, and this placement line is for us to line up the flap that's going to be sitting onto the front of this clutch. So it pops, so it's line on line, and we just skimmy that, that placement line just up a little bit to the right, so just move it so as it's not on, on top of each other. It needs to be even, so the same amount of length, same amount of gap at each end, it needs to be even. And we're going to stitch it into position. So we've taken our tape off. We'll do a placement position mark for our D-rings, the loops for our D-rings, which will hold our strap on. Okay, so there's we're threading a D-ring on. 
we just wrap the end of the tape or the well this is just a, a, a slither of the um cork and foil it hasn't even been turned out it's just flat And we're just going to position those over those placement lines evenly and then take them into position. Just make sure that they're not, the, the D-ring is not too close to the foot. You can be able to, you'll be able to tell that when we do our next part of our exercise. If it's too close, you'll find that the foot will interfere with the, um, the D-ring there. Place our back so it's right sides together, wrong side up, and stitched into position. Stop the machine, just make sure you know where that D ring is. Slowly, slowly over that area. You might need to increase your embroidery foot height, it's quite thick. Try not to get any drag, it's very hard. There we go. And then we're going to place our other piece of lining so as it's wrong side up, right sides together on the back of the hoop. Stick it into position so as it's all firm and doesn't, won't go anywhere. Return the hoop to the machine and then we're doing our final outline stitch to make sure we're happy with how everything is sitting. If we're happy with that, then let's go ahead and do our final row of stitching, which is a triple stitch to hold everything together. Right, we are done. Let's go to our board and let's remove it from the, the hoop. Pull your chair away, away from your second hooping. And on the three sides that do not have the opening there, cut our seam allowances back to about a quarter of an inch. On the last side, we just want quarter of an inch to the opening, so as we actually have a step at the opening. And that step um, could be trimmed back, trim our corners off. Okay, so we're going to tr trim that back to about two centimeters, three quarters of an inch. inch. Give it a, a bit of a squash up and a squeeze so as it breaks some of the tension on those flat bits. When I say breaks the tension, it allows us to turn it through a little bit more easily. Let's turn that through, poke our corners out. Now if we pull that apart, that is our tear away stabiliser for our second turn. So the inside of the bag is in there. We need to pull some of that stabiliser off, that's why we use tear away. If you use wash away, it needs to be washed. There's our flap. So it's still inside out at this stage. We want to actually use quilt clips and clip that bottom seam which we turn through we need to clip that together and then we need to hand sew, sew that um, that opening up. You can use craft glue, double sided tape, whatever you wish, you don't have to hand sew it. The um, cork and, and foil fabric is quite firm so it takes a little bit of handwork to actually get this to, to sit um, well. I say a little bit of handwork, it just it's, it's hard on your fingers, but totally doable. You want that seam to be quite well closed because if it's not in there, it's not going to endure the life of the bag. You don't want to be losing things inside the lining. But nothing will fall out of the bag if you didn't do this. Right, let's finish off our hand sewing there. And the 
Then we're ready to turn through one more time. Grab our corners, push them through. They should turn through quite well because we've already done that once on the other side. Nice and flat, a little bit of ease in our closure. There we have it, lovely clutch.